Everybody, welcome back to another sweet, lovely haul here at A Week in Geekdom. Geo here. Let's do it. All right, everybody, let's get started with some cool manga action. Here we have volume 15 of Dr. Stone. I don't want to show too much of the art because I haven't read this yet, but let me show you a quick panel right there. Love me some Boichi art and can't wait to continue reading uh, Dr. Stone right here. Next up, we've got volume 20 of Demon Slayer, and I really can't show anything from inside just in case you haven't read it because we're near the end. Just three more volumes and we're done with this series. Next up, here is volume 26 of My Hero Academia. I have to catch up with this series. I'm like two volumes behind, so I have no idea what's happening. Uh, but yeah, this series is continuing to fire on all cylinders and cannot wait. Uh, really fun stuff. I had to do it. I'm trying, slowly but surely, I'm trying to collect that, uh, build that Urusawa library. But here is Asadora Volume 1. Uh, volume 6, I think, is the latest one out in Japan. So it's really awesome that we're already... Uh, collecting this series in English. That is awesome. I love it. But Asadora is a wonderful series and I will be uh, uploading a first impressions on this volume pretty soon. So look forward to that. This uh, has really cool artwork inside. Here's some of that wonderful artwork right there. Really dynamic and expressive and just really quick paced and fluid. Just a wonderful read. Asadora's uh, promising, to say the least. So you're probably wondering, why the heck do I have just this lone volume here, Pokemon Adventures Ruby and Sapphire Volume 15? Well, that's very easy to explain. I have the first two boxes, which goes up to Volume 14, and I didn't want to upgrade and uh, get rid of those because those mean a whole lot to me. They're gifts uh, from family members, and I wanted to keep them, obviously. So I tried... Um, I was going to get the collector's edition, however, I'd be missing one volume, which is this one, volume 15. As you can see here, I have this chunky boy right here, Pokemon Adventures Collector's Edition, volume 6, right there. And now I kind of want to do an upgrade and, and double dip. But nonetheless, I have volume 6 here, which contains uh, volume 16, 17, and 18, right in the middle of the... Uh, Ruby and, and Sapphire Adventure. Now it lines up great. I have the first two box sets, then volume 15, and then I can continue reading the series in this format. But seeing um, these books and, and how they how nice they look, I should say, I kind of want to double dip. I'll keep the two box sets, don't, don't get me wrong, but I will probably at some point get the uh, corresponding volumes for that box set, you know? the first uh, five collector's edition, so we'll see. <laughs> Moving onward, we've got Beastars Volume 10, one of my favorite series, and it's so frustrating to collect this because they're taking so long to get everything. We're not even at the halfway point. It's crazy. But nonetheless, I'm very excited that we have Volume 10 right here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, reading more of this. I should wait a little bit and get Volume 11 and then uh, continue my read through because uh, it's, a, it's a quick read and a very uh, fantastic story and just beautiful artwork. Well, this was unexpected. Here we have Gats. Finally, I caved and got it. I made a review a couple months ago as of this video on Gigant, and I am a big Oku fan. Hiroya Oku, his art is magnificent. I love it. So I wanted to get one of the OGs that everybody likes and talks about. I know what happens in this. I, I, I know the story. I've never read it, but I've been spoiled. And uh, thanks to some YouTube videos and I know everything that happens, but nonetheless, I'm really excited to dig into these uh, Omnibus editions. So hopefully Dark Horse keeps publishing these Omnis, hopefully, right? Next up, we've got something that I think everybody should. Let me adjust the camera right there. There we go. Tech on King Creed Black and White All-in-One Edition from Tayo Matsumoto. I think everybody should have that in their library. It is fascinating. I'm digging into this for the first time and really loving it. I cannot wait to talk more in depth about it, because why the heck not? And Matsumoto is one of the legendary mangaka, and I wanted to dig into his uh, repertoire of collected editions. So here is one of the classics, modern classics, Tech on King Creed 
Uh, I'm really excited to talk about it. But yeah, this is a great book. It's the size of a trade paperback, which is always welcomed. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of collected editions and the bigger the better. Oversized artwork all the way, right? Speaking of wonderful reads, I haven't talked about it on the channel, but I am reading and I am up to date with uh, Blood on the Tracks from Shuzo Oshimi. And I said, you know, I'm missing uh, a really cool title that everybody always talks about. And I wanted to start beefing up my physical library of manga and uh, graphic novels and all that stuff. So I went ahead and picked up the Flowers of Evil Complete Edition or the Omnibus Editions or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I, I, this is such a really cool looking series. And I remember the crappy anime that everybody hates. Don't worry about it. I didn't. I never watched it. So this is going to be my first read through uh, of this series. I cannot wait. If I loved um, Blood in the Tracks, I know I am going to dig this as well. So I have all of it here. Here is uh, volume two right there. And let's see if I can fit it all on camera. There's volume three. Right there. Can we fit volume four? Probably. Yeah, there's volume four right there. The Complete Flowers of Evil. Or the Flowers of Evil Complete, I should say. Sorry about that, from Shuzo Oshimi. Can't wait to dig into this. All right, moving on to some anime. Finally, I own this. It is one of my favorite series of 2019 and 2020. It is Ascendance of a Bookworm, probably one of the best isekai titles that you can read or watch or whatever, whether it's the light novel, the manga adaptation, or this anime adaptation. It is a splendid, wholesome series that I cannot recommend enough. I'm really excited about this. However, I do have one complaint, and I know uh, I know the company's not going to care, Sensei, but whatever. I mean, here's... That's it. It's for such an expensive title. That's all you get. Just uh, a disc right there. No internal artwork for the slip cover. No internal art right here. Or a paper slip or something. Come on, guys. You can do better than that. Next up, a classic sports title that everybody loves. And it's really impressive that Discotheque Media can get this license, put 24 episodes on Blu-ray with a great transfer quality and charge less than a Funimation release for half a 24 episode season series at like $48. This was 32, I think at right stuff. It's insane to me, but hey, whatever. <laughs> but nonetheless, I got Hajime no Ippo, the fighting collection number one. See, this is what I'm talking about. Look at the care that went into this. You got the uh, slipcover and alternate artwork right there. You open it up. Let's do that here live. Or not live, you know what I mean. See, you got both Blu-ray discs and you have um, artwork right there at the back. This is what I'm talking about. Speaking of Discotech Media, here is another classic brought back to life in 4K Ultra HD. Of course, it is Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliostro, the 40th anniversary edition. I have seen this movie, but I've never owned it, which is insane. But I was missing the Cagliostro uh, Blu ray, and I always forgot to pick it up. And when they announced this, I was like, all right, now's the perfect time to get this wonderful movie. And here you have alternate artwork. This is what I like to see, not uh, what Sentai's doing with their. Uh, expensive releases. Finally, here is Violet Evergarden from Funimation, the complete series. I'm missing the movie, but I'll get that eventually. I, I, I'll watch this first, and then I'll grab the uh, the movie on Blu-ray. But I was missing this to continue my Kyoto Animation collection, right? And as a special treat, I'm going to show you guys, as I like to do, on these videos. Here's the code for Violet Evergarden. If you grabbed it, let me know in the comment section. So that's it for the anime and manga, and typically I would close out the video. However, I do have more stuff. So this is the others section. So here are a couple of graphic novels, uh, trade paper bags, hardcovers, whatever you want to call it, 
uh, for some Western comics that I enjoy. Here we have Monstrous Volume 5. I do have a video talking about the first volume if you want to find out what this series is about. If you love manga and anime with themes similar to like Wolf's Reign, uh, Last Exile, that type of aesthetic, I think you're going to be right at home with Monstrous, in my opinion. Uh, Marjorie Liu really did a good job. Uh, Sana Takeda's artwork is fantastic in this. So yeah, I do recommend Monstrous. Here's something really cool, really uh, fun looking. This is the final edition of Paper Girls Book 3 from Brian K. Vaughn, Cliff Chang, and a whole bunch of other wonderful people that worked on this title from Image Comics. A really awesome stuff. Again, I did a volume one review, so if you want to check that out, highly recommend it as well. This is the final volume of the hardcovers completes everything. A wonderful, uh, stylistic looking 80s inspired series. So yeah, really cool stuff. I love Paper Girls. A little bit late, but here is Klaus from Grant Morrison, The Life and Times of Santa Claus. This is a really fun, action-packed, trippy reimagining of uh, Santa Claus. I've reviewed the past two hardcovers on the channel, if you want to check that out. And this third one looks really cool. I love Dan Mora's artwork. It's very uh, animated manga inspired. But nonetheless, here is the third hardcover looking really snazzy as well. Last but not least, let's talk some video games because I love playing some games. And here is Immortals Phoenix Rising for PS4. It was originally supposed to be for the Switch and the <laughs> receipt tag from Amazon said Switch Edition, but I got the PS4 Edition. You know what? I don't really care. I'll play it regardless. I got it for the same price as the Switch Edition, so I don't mind. Uh, plus, if I ever get the PlayStation 5, I can upgrade it, right? The uh, upgrade patch. So here is Immortals Phoenix Rising. Next up, I've got from Luminate Run Games, here we have Metal Slug Double X. This was really cool. Um, when I got this in the mail, I had a flashback to a really cool memory of this. Uh, typically, you know, uh, limited run games you pre-order and you have to make sure to do it in time because everybody, you know, you're fighting bots, you're fighting scalpers, you're fighting a whole lot of other nerds that want the title as well, or the game in this case. And with Metal Slug, I've played them. I've played them all in the arcades and... Uh, digitally, I, I have a few on the Switch uh, that I that I downloaded and all that stuff, but I've never owned a physical copy of a Metal Slug game, and I really enjoyed it. One of my favorite memories was playing with my dad, uh, Metal Slug 3, which is my favorite, and we did the co-op thing and beat the game, which was really fun. So when this came out uh, for pre-order, that day I was at work, and the pre-orders went live at 10 in the morning I think or close to that and I had my laptop ready uh, I jumped on it and I don't know if something happened or bots beat me to it but that first wave uh, sold out and I couldn't get it and I was pissed the next round would be the same day at 6 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time so uh, I left work and you know, this is uh, uh, July 2020, full COVID swing, if you will. So <laughs> when I left, I am very OCD about uh, health and uh, hygiene and all that stuff. And especially nowadays with what's going on, I'm extra, extra cautious with that stuff. So when I got home, um, I, uh, <laughs> I disregarded every protocol I opened the car door, and instead of going in and, and doing the whole cleaning procedure and, and setting, for, uh, setting everything apart to uh, disinfect and all that stuff, um, I popped open the laptop. I said, no, I can't wait for all that stuff. I had logged in, limited run. It was 5.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> logged in my info, got the freaking order, and I'm like, finally. My whole family is looking at me super weird. My dad was like, okay, you're done? Cool. <laughs> you just wasted five minutes of your life. But I said, you know what? It's worth it because I want to own a freaking Metal Slug Double X. Um, this was actually the seventh game, if I remember correctly, which was released on the DS, and I played that. But I 
wanted to own it because why not? I'm still waiting for them to announce a freaking Switch collection. Like, uh, I don't know if they'll ever do it, but like Metal Slug, like the anthology, do another version of that, but include everything up to double um, X. That would be so awesome. I want that. <laughs> but regardless, here it is, limited run, and it does include the uh, card, which I don't know if you guys enjoyed watching that that stuff, but here's the inside right there looking really cool it's a fun game you know it's a little bit weird to play it on ps4 this definitely plays a lot better handheld and on the switch but what are you gonna do next up speaking of switch games i got two more that i want to show you guys right here of course i had to get this everybody got it right super mario world uh or super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury i never owned a wii u so this is the first time that i'm playing this really excited to uh, get into that and another limited run uh, this one it doesn't have a particular story because this is a title that not everybody's going to be after but it looks awesome gave me some really creepy uh, Lovecraftian vibes with uh, Junji Ito madness so I went ahead and picked up the physical edition of Return of the Obra Din this looks really cool this mystery investigation style with that uh, really cool PC era style artwork. I, I really uh, I'm looking forward to playing this and figuring out what the hell's happening. But yeah, really excited. Let me show you the uh, card inside, right? It does come with a manual, which is always great. I miss those. There's a card right there. Even this freaking Switch game has internal artwork, yet Sentai for 60 bucks on Ascendance can't give me that. Come on, that sucks. <laughs> So yeah, I got two, those two games, and I got two more for you. Um, my favorite, whoa, that glare, look at that glare. All right, let me fix that, perfect. I am a huge fan of Metroid. That's my favorite franchise from Nintendo, but I don't own all the games, and I want to fix that. I made a video on my second channel, uh, Geo's Arcade, if you wanna check that out and subscribe, where I talked about my Nintendo collection. And one of my goals was uh, completing the Metroid set. I've played the games, um, but I don't own all of them. So I went ahead and started getting the ones I'm missing. Here's the crappy one that everybody hates, but hey, it's part of the collection, right? Metroid Prime Federation Force for the 3DS. By the way, it had a huge label right there, like a rental copy or something. So that, like, tried fixing it unfortunately got a little bit banged up when i ripped the label off but it's a it's not a great game so it's okay and i got metroid prime hunters for the ds which is really really awesome i got some more you'll have to wait for the next haul video to see them because they haven't arrived as of this video if nintendo's not going to celebrate the 35th anniversary at least i will so stay tuned on my second channel for some uh, metroid goodness so that's about it guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want me to review any specific product that I mentioned here in this haul, leave those comments down below and I'll gladly get to work on that. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for all the likes and supporting A Week in Geekdom. It truly does mean a whole lot. And of course, if you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos pop up. That's all there is. Thank you so much for watching once again. I will catch all of you on our next video. Thank you.